Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're in front of Malloy Hall on the campus of Fort Hayes State University and we're talking about uh, the Fort Hayes State University Marching Band and the Flag and Baton Corps. And we're talking with Molly Johnson from Phoenix, Arizona, who Hi. is a senior. And what's your major, Molly? Criminal Justice. And we're also talking with Shelby Shoemaker, the other part of the team. Shelby is a Hayes freshman. Uh, she is uh, majoring in? Psychology. Okay. Uh, just recently changed uh, to uh, child development, right? Yep. Ah. So um, these two young ladies have been part of the Fort Hayes State University Marching Band Corps. And uh, as we talk about twirling, we wanted to get a little insight from these uh, award winners. Uh, first place team award and first place individual award at the National Baton Twirling Championship and competition in South Bend, Indiana. This must have been something, Molly. Yes, it's such an honor to go out there and represent not only our team, but our school as well. Talk about how you pull this off, Shelby. We spend lots of hours in the gym practicing with each, um, with our, not only ourselves, but our team. Um, we spend anywhere from three to four hours a day as a team, and then lots of girls stay after practice to practice anywhere from three to five hours on their own. Yeah, talk about the team concept itself a little bit, would you, Molly? Members of the team, uh, kind of their backgrounds and such. Well, actually, we have girls from the age of six to 21, and so it's different variety of twirling you have to kind of even out the playing field so we enter the beginner divisions and we all do the same routine and we just work so hard to get together and we're me and Shelby we travel an hour to practice because our practice is in Salina and so it's just sacrifice that you make for your team and that sacrifice is is a big part of it isn't mm -hmm. it I mean you can't do it without a commitment and practice and time Yep. I've been at this since I was two. I started in Salina. Um, my family moved back here about eight years ago, and I couldn't give up twirling, so my mom made the sacrifice to drive me an hour and a half every Monday for twirling practice. Started at two? Mm hmm How in the world did that happen? I saw the K-State twirlers at the football field, and I told my mom, that's what I want to do someday, and so oh, I stuck to it. My goodness. How about you, Molly? Um, I started when I was actually four or five. I was a little bit older. Oh, you um, were an old kid when you started, weren't <laughs> Yes. You? I was actually walking <laughs> when I started. <laughs> but, yes, I got involved. My next-door neighbor actually twirled, and, of course, I had to be just like her. So my mom was like, let's enroll you, and I never gave it up. <laughs> now, you, both of you young ladies have worked with the very young twirlers. Uh, talk a little about that interaction that takes place, uh, Shelby. It definitely makes you build as a twirler too because you have to take your knowledge and break it down for the younger girls and then that's how you expand your knowledge because you kind of learn from yourself too and you learn from the little ones. Mm -hmm. So you're actually, by teaching, you're actually learning yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you just spend more, more time with the baton, you sit there and play around with it just like the little ones do and that's how you expand your knowledge. And what would you add to that, Molly? Um, I love little kids, so I love playing with little kids, and they're so cute. Their costumes are like this big. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just like Shelby said, you have to get in the mentality that they're not old enough to understand certain things, so you kind of have to break it down for them mm -hmm. so they understand, like, and you have to reward them after they're done because they get so excited when they catch a little trick, but it's it's a fun experience. And, of course, uh, the, the outcome is for you two to see the results yes. when the, the young people perform. Of course, of course. It's the greatest feeling when they catch their first one spin or their first thumb flip and they're just jumping up and down and they don't know what to do next. <laughs> it's, it's a great feeling. Talk about this uh, trip to South Bend, Indiana. This was no small venue either. Some 3,000 competitors there. Yep. That must have been something. Yeah, um, we just load up the car, fill it up completely, no room for anybody to sit, uh, make the 16-hour haul all the way up there. Um, and when we get there, we all ch check into the hotel, have a morning practice, and then we always go and take pictures. And after those pictures, uh, we go home, go to bed, and get ready for the next day because that's when it starts, and that's when you're on the floor with 3,000 amazing twirlers. Wow. And how do you approach that? Now, how many people went on this trip? It very select few, and you have to be the best of the best to compete at that level. 
and I am very fortunate to be on an amazing team and have an amazing coach that gets you to that level. And uh, talk a little about that uh, uh, team effort, if you would, and how many people are involved in that effort. Too. That team is your support rock for that week because you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs, and that team is essential to making you be the best you can be because when you don't go out on the floor and have the best routine, they're there to pick you back up and get you ready for your next routine. And those kinds of routines are developed over a long period of time, aren't they, Molly? Yes. Um, I actually have about 11 individual routines that are different and then the four team routines that we do together. And just those... It's all a mentality, I think, honestly. Um, you go out there. I don't ever watch the girl before me that goes. I, it's just a mental thing. I can't. I just have to focus on my own zone. Um, I go out there. I do the best I can. And just like Shelby said, if you have a bad routine, you got to just pick yourself up. Your team is there to support you, and you got to move on and get to the next event. Molly makes a good point, I think, about the mentality part of it, mm -hmm. because we always hear about athletics and other uh, venues, even taking tests and things, yeah. which you two are very well uh, <laughs> uh, versed in uh, here at Fort Hay State, uh, that you have to get to a, ri a mindset, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, that mindset is, you can have all the skill in the world, but that mindset's what's going to get you from point A to point B, especially in twirling. Talk to, uh, talk to me, Molly, about how you two got together. How did you... Uh, find each other how did you develop these routines to become first place award winners well actually i met my coach my senior year of high school at nationals my phoenix coach actually introduced me to shannon mize who is my coach now in salina mm -hmm. and we kind of got together and she informed me that there was a girl living in hayes where i was gonna go to school mm -hmm. and so i got in t contact with shelby and shelby's mom and they were willing to give me rides every Monday night to practice, and I was so grateful for that. I'm so glad I met Shelby. I'm so glad I'm part of Shannon Stars, and just we practice nonstop <laughs> for nationals. That's how we get these routines together. But Shelby, there has to be some kind of a connection, doesn't there? I mean, it's it's not just the mechanics of twirling. You two have to have a, a, a connection mentally as well, don't you? Yeah, and that definitely started four years ago when I started twirling with Molly. We started learning each other's twirling styles and started getting used to the way um, each other acted and everything. And so um, when we go out on the field, we're able to kind of synchronize with each other. We have our routines, but you have to be able to stay in tune with your partner. When she's doing one trick and she just skipped one, you have to jump in and skip one too. So it's uh, it's really a uh, reading each other and kind yeah. of uh, being on the same mental wavelength. Then. Yeah. Um, across the field, if somebody drops, you kind of have to slow down and wait for the other one to pick up their drop and just, just so you stay together and look good on the field. Now, tell me a little bit about developing the program that you two put together uh, as part of, uh, well, first of all, as part of the routine for the competition itself. How does that take place? Uh, give us a little of the mechanics of you two working on your program for competition, like in South Bend. Well, actually, um, we don't actually compete together except on team. We have our individual routines. And so we each go out there and represent Fort Hayes in a college routine. and. Um, that's totally separate. We Our coach teaches us different um, routines. And we do the same fight song music. We do Tiger Rags, which Fort Hayes is known for. Um, and then we just do various um, halftime music that we've done in the previous years. And that's basically what we do for competition-wise. And then we have our individual routines and our team routines. And in those individual routines, uh, do you develop those yourself, uh, Shelby? Or do they come from... Uh, a kit or a process that takes place or from the coach? Uh, where do these come from? When you start twirling at the young age of two, three, four, you start to develop your skill set, your tricks and everything that you know. And then my coach, she makes all, up all of my routines and she'll give me new tricks to challenge me each year. And that's how we come up with our routines. Our coach just pulls them and we all just kind of know a basic skill set. Molly, this has to be physical as well as <laughs> mental too, doesn't it? Talk oh, about yes. the physical aspects of it. Oh man, I just turned 21. I feel like a 60 year old. It's <laughs> not good, but <laughs> I mean, I'm pushing through. I've had back problems for a while now. And so it's just, you, you set a goal. And my goal is my last year at nationals is this year. And that's been my goal since I was very little. And so I'm pushing through the injuries. They come and they go and you just have to think about your result that you want at the end. You're out there to win. You're out there to represent yourself, your school, and your team. 
And so it just comes down to who wants it more, basically. you got to push through the pain. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Xiaomi, are you feeling as old as Molly now? Or are you feeling the uh, the years creeping up on you? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely my lower back, I feel it. Oh, boy. So that's the first thing that uh, calls your attention. That goes, yep. Uh, your back and your hips. <laughs> your back and the hips. Uh, oh, my goodness. Well, you've got to stay physically fit as well as, uh, of course, everything that goes into it. Sleep, nutrition, the yes, whole thing. Of course. Of course. And uh, in addition to that, there might be something called studying, I guess, <laughs> that plays into this. Yes. But uh, these uh, these young ladies are rather remarkable from not only the, the twirling, the, the flag routines as well, because uh, uh, you do three batons at one time, Molly. I do. <laughs> um, three Baton is my all-time favorite event. I don't know. It's just a very, it's challenging, and I just love a challenge. It's weird because I hate two baton, and there's one less baton, but I love three baton. Um, just the tricks that I'm given, my coach gives me, it just challenges me, and I love the challenge. <laughs> In addition to the uh, work with the marching band uh, and the shows that are put on at Fort Hayes State uh, ball games, uh, there's also the studying, uh, there's the uh, major that you have to work to, but there's also those part-time jobs, right oh, yeah. Shelby? They get the best year. I work at Trade Home in the Mall and then I also have my own business and I teach the Twirl Academy here in Hayes. I started that about six years ago. I had a bunch of girls interested in twirling, so I just started a team. That way I didn't have to do nine million private lessons. Um, they all love it. They all stick with it. They work so hard. Um, this year we're planning to go to state again. We are three-time state national champion, or three-time state champions, so. Wow, must be a good coach there. Huh? I try. Ah, uh, that's great. But in addition to that, it is not only young ladies who can participate. Mm -hmm. I actually have one guy this year I'm really excited. He's doing awesome. He had his first lesson this week, and he's been working hard. He's excited to come again. He was scared to go to a class with a bunch of girls, so we did a private lesson. But tonight he's coming to a class with a bunch of girls, and he's so excited. <laughs> and uh, you uh, have some plans for maybe doing a little teaching uh, back in Phoenix after graduation, right? I do. I do. Um, I am so proud of Shelby for starting her own team here. It's, it's amazing. Um, the sport of baton twirling is kind of a dying out sport and we just need to definitely get the community involved, mm -hmm. get more people to come to nationals and just competitions. And so I would like to go back home, start my career of course in the criminal justice field and maybe a part time help my old coaches um, back home teach private lessons. But uh, in the, the future then uh, hopefully to be able to get more people involved in twirling. Yes, of course. That's the goal. That's the ultimate goal is to keep the sport of baton twirling alive. So you've got to bring these young people in. <laughs> uh, that's what it's all about, I think. Ladies, uh, congratulations on the awards. A very, very nice representation <laughs> of uh, Fort Hayes State University. And if you want to see these uh, young women along with uh, the team members, you're certainly invited to uh, home football games and home events at Fort Hayes State University. And you'll find that uh, there are many, many different aspects involved in baton and flag corps at Fort Hayes State University. Our thanks to Dr. Lane Weaver, Director of Bands, for uh, coordinating our interview today with Molly Johnson, a senior from Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, Shelby Shoemaker, a freshman from Hayes, on Community Connection. Thanks for watching.